All right, I thought I'd just do a quick review on the solar panel. This is, this is actually the solar panel that I bought. And uh, actually they had this, um, you know, it's still a pretty good price here with, uh, with this coupon, but they actually had this thing a little bit cheaper not too long ago. So I actually jumped on it. Um, you know, I kind of took a gamble on it, I guess you could say, because, you know, uh, this brand uh, at Old Story, you know, it's not, not really a real well-known brand. Uh, they do sell this uh, this power station as well, this LFP power station. I, I actually took a, a look at this in a, in a separate video. It's a budget unit, you know, it's a budget unit. So I thought, you know, let's take a chance on this solar panel and just, just kind of see because it, it really had some appealing specs. <laughs> um, you know, number one is is it's uh, it's actually a higher voltage, 36 volts. Um, it's actually, well, we'll kind of talk about all the specs here in a second. Um, let's just kind of get into it actually here. And so, yeah, it does have MC4 connectors on it. And then um, as far as the materials and stuff go, this is actually, it's kind of surprised me. Um, it actually seems quite well built. Uh, ETFE was another thing that I was looking for, you know. Um, basically, this is just the, the outer film of the solar panel, which is going to protect it from, you know, basically the, the solar radiation and stuff like that. So um, it's got very high transparency and, um, you know, it's going to last long. Um, the, typically, the other option you will see is like PET. So you definitely always want to just kind of look for ETFE. So I had that as well. And then as I mentioned, you know, it's kind of like a unique thing here. This, you know, one solar panel here, you know, the open circuit voltage is around 39 volts. And actually, they don't say what the exact, you know, maximum power voltage is. But, you know, they do call it the 36 volt panel. It's probably a little bit lower than that. But still, you know, this is a this is a high voltage for just, you know, a single panel. The reason it might be appealing to you as well, you know, let's just say instead of hooking up two uh, 100 uh, watt panels and then having to hook them in series or parallel or whatever, you know, you just have a 200 watt panel here and it's already at the higher voltage. So basically, you know, anytime you can use kind of higher voltage and produce, you know, basically be pumping less amps, generally it's just going to be a little bit more efficient, right? You're not going to have as many losses and you're not going to create, create as much heat. This is kind of like a good idea with solar panels, right? Uh, you got power running through these panels. Um, if you can just have the power, you know, basically running at less amps, um, creating less heat, that's always a good thing, especially, you know, if it's already hot out and the, the sun's obviously heating it up. It just, you know, one less way you're going to be creating more heat in these panels. And as you know, like heat, heat actually reduces the output on solar panels. Now it's also appealing too if you got a, a solar generator that can accept like a pretty high voltage range, like a, a hundred volts or higher. You know, some of the models I can think of are like those Growatt Infinities, that new Renogy Phoenix, um, the old EcoFlow Delta Max, Delta Pro, obviously. You know, if you get a couple of these panels, you can just hook these things up in series. You know, even just two of these panels, you could hook these things up in series, right? And, and you already at, um, you know, 70, 80 volts, <laughs> you know, and so you're not going to be pushing all that, that many amps. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely an appeal to this. Now, the one thing I, I would just note is, you got to, you know, you got to kind of understand what, you know, what you're working with here. One of the reasons this, uh, the review is actually not, you know, the rating on this thing is actually not that great is because a lot of the, the people on there left, you know, one star reviews because they said it didn't work. You know, uh, it, it probably didn't work because they had a, a power station that could only accept up to like, you know, 28 volts or 30 volts or something like that. Right. Now, the downside of this panel is we do get this EcoFlow style uh, kickstand case. This is you know, for using this as a kickstand, it's just, it's a, it's, it's horrible design. Yes, it does work. Yes, you can make it work. But, you know, compared to just having, um, you know, kickstands that basically just, you know, fold out, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's just, it, it, it takes way too much time to set it up and it's just not that sturdy. Now, the, there are a couple of advantages to this. Um, basically, you know, the one advantage is, as you can see here, this little black piece is, is where the MC4 connector is at is um you know if you do have multiple panels you can actually um the orientation on these you can actually move them around right you could actually have or let's just say you got another one over here right you can actually have the mc4 output on this this side here and then on this one here you can you can kind of put them next to each other right so if you have the kickstand case like this you know so you can actually flip you can actually flip them around, right? If, if, whereas if you have uh, panels with kickstands, they only go one direction. So if you have the output on one end, 
it's always going to be on that end. You know what I mean? So um, there is an advantage there with this design. There's also just going to be like more room if you want to tuck your power station in behind the panel, right? There's just going to be more room. And then, um, you know, as far as how I actually end up using these things, just is flat on the ground. Like, like I just think, um, yes, you're going to get less output power, but it's just so much easier to set these things up, just lay them flat on the ground. And um, so that's just how I plan on using it. And it's just, you know, fine with me. And another reason I found this panel appealing actually is, is take a look at these specs. They actually list these specs on the, the little sheet here as actually 210 watts. And I have seen over 200 watts with this thing. Now, you know, once it starts heating up, um, you know, it's going to drop 150, 160, something like that, like usual. But, but you know, they do these panels do put out good power. Now, the, the other thing that I'll say here is that, you know, when you have these things flat on the ground, it's not always a bad thing because, um, you know, when it's cloudy, uh, you know, basically, you know, when it's cloudy, you almost want to have them flat on the ground because take a look at this. Take a look at this. If you got it angled up like this, guess what? This is this is the amount of sky that you're going to be collecting light from. Right. But when it's cloudy. Um, actually, the, the sun's light is actually spread across the entire uh, horizon. So you can basically see if you have this thing angled up and it's cloudy, like complete cloud cover, you're missing out on all this uh, light. Right? This is all, this is, there's light coming from all these directions that you're missing out on. So um, yes, you're going to get less power uh, in direct sunlight, but you're actually going to do better in cloudy days anyway. So Again, and you don't have to move the panel, you know, you don't have to move the panel. So again, it's just kind of why I like to have this thing um, laying on the ground. Now I'm going to talk about more of this. I'm, I'm going to plan on making like a, uh, like a complete buying guide for, for portable solar panels here. There's, there's actually more stuff I want to talk about. So I won't get into that now. And then this case is actually quite nice. This is, um, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a fabric case. But it, on one end, it is stiff, you know, obviously to use it as a kickstand. And then, of course, um, you know, the handle on here is actually really nice, too. It's a nice, you know, padded handle. It's not just a uh, rubber grip like some of them have. And it does have that waterproof zipper. Now, the thing is, too, this is, again, not my favorite design. I kind of like those kickstand designs where basically the thing folds up and it becomes its own case. I think that just, you know, for, for deploying these panels, that's just it's the simplest thing. But what's nice about... Having a fully zippered case like this is it really does protect those the panels quite well, right? And um, and then you can always use the case too. You could you can use the case for some some things, additional shading, whatever. Um, you know, if you have the solar panels out and then you have the case separate, you can use that. So it, it's it's definitely a pro and con thing. And then yeah, the final note is they they actually mentioned you know item weight sixteen point five pounds. I I think that's just the solar panel that the case weighs probably another three pounds or something like that. So it is like, you know, all in, it is going to be like 20 pounds um, when you're actually carrying these things. So that's just, you know, something to note. It is a little bit on the heavy end, but again, you know, they, they appear to be uh, quality panels. And I think I'd rather have that than have like a, a 10 pound, 200 watt panel. Right. Uh, <laughs> so some, some flimsy thing. So yeah, just a, just kind of a, a quick review on this, uh, this uh, high voltage, um, high high output uh, budget solar panel. So hopefully you just kind of found this uh, interesting and helpful. And yeah, thanks for watching.